Well, we got to do something that I was very excited to do today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had never been there, so it was super cool to even meet the guy and see what's going on. Yeah. So we went to It's Greek to Me Taverna and Parea today, mm-hmm. and uh, they've been there for 40 years. Yep. 1982, so almost 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've been doing incredibly perfect, authentic Greek cuisine there uh, since they opened. They started doing gyros, um, you know, started as like a small... Right. Greek deli mm-hmm. uh, back in the day. And then that building, they actually started buying more of the building as time went by. And they eventually started a restaurant. And then they were able to do, you know, more of like the dinner style food, not just the deli. Um, just down the street, we didn't get to talk about it too much during the interview, is Bill's Import Foods, which is like a Greek. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like a Greek, you know, supermarket, olive yep. oil, all the different cheeses. So they've like. You know they've been in working in conjunction for that right. forty years. Um, what did you think about everything that was going on there? You got to take a little bit of a tour, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, I got to see the whole place. Um, he showed me around and you know kind of gave a little brief history on how they started in the basement and then turned into like now it's a prep area. Um, I mean, he said there's not much going on right now, but um, just with everything. But yeah, you know they're they're doing great and it's it's such a cool building. Yeah. Like the patio alone, but when you actually walk into the restaurant and go through the kitchens and all that stuff, you can feel the history. You can feel like the work that has gone on in that building. And that's super cool. I, like, oh, that's awesome to hear. Yeah. That, uh, cause, super cool. Because, you know, sometimes I think that I impart some of my like own feelings on that. But if you got that as your first impression, oh, that's yeah. so yeah. awesome. And I feel that, you know, like it's just like, you know, you, you go into old places, you know, great example when you went into um, Alibi underneath bar. It was like, you know, you felt yeah. you felt that there was life there. Yeah. And there could be life. Yeah. But here, I mean, it's actually a working place. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. what I mean is it's it's different. It's, it's you just feel the history kind of thing i don't i don't know if that makes any sense no it makes total sense it makes uh, it makes total sense uh that's part of the reason that i think it was important for us to go out there and interview alki because he is the human incarnation of that history right he's been there for all of it so like just uh, just having him sit there was like kind of you got that feeling just from his presence well right? I and mean, he's he's from greece he went back and lived there for you know five years again and yeah. then came back and you know helped the family which all all greeks do yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. uh so it's cool man like it's super cool like that's a legit greek freaking family man yeah. like yeah. business and all yeah like and their and like their impact on that area too is like one of these you know we did the history of St. Paul but the history of like the Lake Street area and the Lindale oh, area is dude. like so deep and rich and they've been there for all of it you oh, know all of it it's it's wild and and scary what happened with covid but they so i i was talking to them when like they were reopening right and now talking to them they're so much more relaxed right like they seem maybe on edge to people who weren't talking to them when like shit was hitting the fan Mm -hmm. but it gives me hope just to see how they're like yeah you know we're figuring it out and we're working it out yeah and they're positive you know you know there's always ups and downs especially in all this yeah but you know to to at least still be open and and trying you know to minimize and get out the best they can yeah and still keep it you know true is huge dude yeah like, it's huge and yeah. i completely i mean applaud them on that yeah like and that patio is fucking dope <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous yeah it's gorgeous yeah. everybody's gonna see it yeah in a couple minutes it's amazing like, it's wow it's it's something else especially we got to get there like real early in the morning i don't think they opened for lunch until like 11 uh, yeah but I it was it like 11 it was nice and cool and like the sun was like you know hitting us perfectly yeah. it was like it's it's something else on yeah. that patio and the food is really good you got uh you got a uh you got had the euro ex- omelet yeah yeah so the, his pork euro we talked a little bit about it in the interview um he made an omelet with it and then you had some spanakopita the spinach pie which yep. is back on point oh it's 
killer. That was another thing where when they changed ownership, the the new ownership changed the spinach pie, and a lot of people were upset about it. So that's another thing that's like back to normal it's for everybody really who's like it's Greek to me fans. Spanakopita is now on point. And I'm not the biggest Spanakopita fan. Yeah. Like, because it's it's hit or miss, man. Yeah. And, you know, you get to a point where it's like, no, I'm not even going to try it here because, yeah. man, I had it at blah, 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 and it was, nah. Yeah. Soggy and shit. Yeah. You know? But here it was a hit. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, we'll have to... You you and S will have to go out there and and have yeah. a date night because it's just yeah. the atmosphere. If that ever great. comes, we we totally will. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't see that in the near future, but uh, yeah, I know how it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. yeah. Well, then maybe you and I can go one of these days and we yeah. can we can try it out, taste it out, and let the people know because they got a lot of good things going culinary on the, in the culinary aspect. I mean that Euro meat, hands down, is I mean. The best I've had. Yeah, I mean he he's he's humble in the interview, but it's I mean, by far the best euros you can get yep. in the in the state. Yep. Right. And there's other people who do their own euros, um, and they just it's just not as good. Yep. Right. So, um, what else do I want to say about it? I mean, really, I want people to know that it's open mm-hmm. and that it's accessible. Right. Like, there's not uh, there's not crazy buildings being burned down and oh, no. you know the the stuff that is around there on lake street is mostly graffiti and art kind of like and commemorating beautiful, beautiful and paying art. homage i think that uh i think it's an experience man the whole thing is an experience and they're doing carry out they're doing catering they're doing patio they're doing you know yep. uh i think that they have some kind of delivery thing set up i don't know if it's grubhub or if it's right. I'm not sure which company it is but they're they're doing Every avenue. So if if you know of or are looking for a place that you can get the best Greek food in the city, it's Greek to me, Taverna, and Perea, for real. Totally. And they're, I, here's the thing. They're not paying us to say any of this. You no, know? and it, I, I actually wouldn't. I, it was great. It was, yeah. It was great. Like yeah. that Euro meet, I mean, hands down, it's fucking awesome. And you had, what did he bring out for booze for you? Um, It was a... Uh, Man, I'm not sure. It was like a... Cipro? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the, on, on that on, on that end, too, they have fantastic Greek wines. Yeah, uh, they have great spirits. Greek, Greek liquors, liqueurs, and, yeah. and um, I don't know. I don't think right now their, like, mixed drinks are a big thing because nobody's sitting inside and they don't oh, have right. an outside bar. Um, but they have... They have options. They have take home wine and mm-hmm. and um oh and yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yep. So um, I think we're gonna leave you here. Yeah. We're gonna introduce you to uh, Elkis and Eric mm-hmm. and let them take it from here. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So Elkis. Yeah. Hi, Christos. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, so. Uh, I'm actually super excited about getting to come out here and talk to you. Um, we've started this show, and one of the biggest things about this show is us getting to showcase restaurants in the Twin Cities um, that are opening, reopening, um, kind of, uh, I don't know, just uh, they're not getting the attention that they deserve. And I think with your restaurant, it's Greek to me, Taverna and Parea. Uh, yeah, you guys, you guys have been around for so long that people aren't really giving you the credit that you that you deserve. So, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Alkis. I've been here as a family member since the beginning of the restaurant. And I worked through with that. I went back to Greece and I came back again in the restaurant in 2001. Uh, as far as we getting the attention, yes, we do get the attention of our customers. I won't say that. Only we try to reach more people, you know. Uh, the people we do have here, they're very nice, very, very appreciative of, of being us very often. Mm-hmm. Just we haven't, uh, we're trying to reach everybody to know us. Yeah. Like we're back in business again. Yeah, yeah, you guys are back in business, and I think... Um, 
telling people a little bit about the timeline of the restaurant is important, right? Mm -hmm. Because you you opened what fifty years ago originally? Oh, well, not that's right? nineteen eighty two. Yeah, nineteen eighty two for yes. a while, and it sold about four years ago. And obviously, for a number of reasons or whatever might be the reasons, the previous owners couldn't make it, and the place is closing in September. And my friend Eric and uh, my nephew would decide it would be a good thing to try to reopen the place. Obviously, at the time, we didn't have the COVID-19 uh, in mind. <laughs> right, but right. We, in a perfect environment, so we said, sure, we'll go for it. And I quit my other job uh, in November, and we've been actually working here since November. Yeah, uh, and uh, I mean we did a lot of uh, cleaning, a lot of equipment repair, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be working, and I uh, was preparing to be open on April, which is kind of ready. And then we we'll kid with the COVID-19, and we we'll said, "What we're doing now?" So yep. and in May we just we decided we talk. I said we can't stay here. We already have our expenses. We already spend a, ma a month great amount of time here to try to replace the place just open for curbside or whatever it's gonna happen it's gonna happen which is really it did help us a lot you know the people the find outside the people who try to reach the find that was excited they we did have a pretty good thing going on for a little while until we got uh, with uh, George Floyd and we had to shut down again, you know, that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. another shock for us, you know, yeah. like we didn't have enough problems yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. And then you close for a while and now after a week we sit down again, talk with uh, partners and stuff like that and we decide to go ahead and open for the patio because that was uh, uh, the thing to do, open the patio and later on the inside with uh, six foot apart, half of a... Uh, uh, of a of a sitting capacity. Yeah, half cap, half cap, half, half capacity. Cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so that's pretty much what it is. Uh, I mean, we're doing okay. Business, they're not super great, but they're good. Uh, and and we don't making a lot of money at the time, but we do have customers coming and very appreciative of being us being open so that's probably our foot in the, the time in being you know yeah <laughs> that's totally what we, yeah that's what we're making right now yeah. well like we talked about before earlier i think that a lot of people just don't really know kind of what this area like uh -huh. what the whole area is like right now because they see a lot of things on the news they see like a lot of fires a lot of burning mm -hmm. you know kind of that fear mongering that's going on uh -huh. uh, you know in media because they need ratings and 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 some of the stuff is real some of the stuff is just like a little bit more exaggerated uh, i agree but I agree. but i mean seth and i got here fine there wasn't there wasn't even heavy traffic no and i mean there's some great art some great murals yeah and all that kind of stuff all down lake <laughs> yeah so i think that's that's one thing to to recognize uh for anybody who's like wondering what lake street is actually like um you know, it's beautiful patio space with amazing Greek food. Now, I want to yeah. bring I want to bring something up um, that uh, you touched on a little bit, but for the like before you guys reopened in September, this the uh, it's Greek to me was under different management for a right. while, and um, I think that you can see it in some of the reviews that you know uh, kind of slid away from the the. Re reputation that you guys had for years and years and years mm -hmm. and now it's back under the original management right Correct. so it's so it's you're you're making the food right you're pretty much here 24 <laughs> 7 right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So six days a week anyhow we have monday off to oh yeah okay. that's good <laughs> yeah but uh, that, yeah we do and be so, be, because under the circumstances we're gonna have a limited menu i will try to expand but you only can do so much without right. you know sacrifice too much you know then then you end up uh, throwing a lot of things away you know and uh, so we try to be a little more manageable on on, uh, on mm -hmm. our menu that's all 
Uh, yeah, I definitely, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I think when I was working here, it was probably like a three or four page menu and there was a lot, there was a lot going on and you just, you know, sometimes simple is best, right? Yeah, well, it's, it is, and it, but we only have, you know, like 40, 50 people capacity with full, right. you yeah. know, and that's, you and know, the you times can't, we're you, in, you can't, you can't have a menu it's like It's too much. That. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we do, we try to, and if customers come over and they have a request, we try to fulfill them, not maybe right away, but as soon as we can. Yeah. And we try to put different specials for, for almost everybody. You yeah. Know, we try to, to make them as happy as we can and try to be uh, as original as we can be, you know, at right. the time. Yeah, so when, you're, when you were building this menu, um, I, I hear a lot of Greek people saying like, oh, it's, it's just like Yaya's cooking, but I mean, this is this is your cooking, right? It is. That's what we'll, we'll be learn from families and uh, recipes and uh, from Greece and everybody. We did have a tavern in Greece. It's not. It's something that's going on for years. So yeah, it's the same recipe, the same cooking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what? So where in Greece are you from? We're from Thessaloniki, which yeah. is in the second big city in Greece, in the northern part of Greece. Uh, uh, that cooking is a little bit different there because we do have influence. The Greek food, of course, besides that, we do have a little bit influence from uh, 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 the Middle East too because uh, when Constantinopolis and Smyrna at the time it was a great Greek city, you know, and yeah, uh, and uh, some of the and the culture was great, you know. So, so some of the dishes and preparing just come from them too, you know. That's why, not bragging about it, but uh, Thessaloniki consider it like it's a good place to go and, and, and uh, enjoy food, you know. So. Yeah. So when so when did you uh, leave Thessaloniki? Uh, I lived in Thessaloniki in 1976, which is I became a sailor for a little while ago in boats, and then, mm. then I, uh, uh, I moved here in 1976, yeah, and then I got married and I stayed here, you know, that's pretty much all. At the time, I worked for, in Illinois for a little while, and even in Iowa, when I first came here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, part of my, um, my um, life, I guess. And it was fun, you know, so, and then uh, in the 80s, 82, my brother just like, well, he was here uh, for uh, getting a job, maybe uh, as a general builder or whatever he wanted to do, and he just got his degree, and then we decided to open the restaurant, and that took over pretty much at the time. Wow, so, so since 82, you've kind of been, have you been here with, with, uh, your brother is Ari Aguirre, correct? Yeah, correct, yeah. So, um, you've been here working with Ari pretty much since it opened, right? Pretty much, uh, we did work together. Uh, the only time I took off about four, four or five years uh, in 1997, 96 actually, to 2000. So I went to back and lived in Greece, for example, for mm -hmm. two years, so I did that and then I came back and took 2001 I started working again. Now for my brother, instead of being, being part of the, uh, 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 from, of the business. Um, so let me, let me ask you about the new name, mm -hmm. okay? Because I know what the new name means. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I didn't even know there was a new name. Yeah, so instead of, uh, it's Greek to me, it's, it's Greek to me, Taverna and Parea. Can you explain what Parea is? Parea is just uh, normally in Greece, well, everywhere in the world, I guess, in a way. It's getting together a bunch of friends and have a good time, and you don't have to each one order individually a meal. You can order like a family style and have fun. You know, that's basically what Parea means. Uh, uh, friends get it together, basically, yeah. Parea means. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's absolutely beautiful. I think that needs to be recognized in totally. in culture a little bit more um, because here, you know, there's you have like the fast food movement, and then kind of like whatever the Chipotle Panera kind of like 
creation. It's all about yeah. speed, get it quickly, eat your food, and then, you know, get back to work. Uh-huh. And uh, it's like I came here and I ate last week, and I think I was here for, like, five hours. Right. Yeah, and well... I, and you know, not everybody can do that, but it, it's a. You say that seems like a long time. It was. It was a long time, <laughs> but it was a. But, but the point is, that that was that was only with one person. With five people, you can come here. You can have a great community experience. And that's what it's friends. all about. Yeah. So yeah. Pare, Parea is like a. You know, it's like your your mm-hmm. close knit f- friend group that you mm-hmm. go out with. And I just, I don't know. I really appreciate as a Greek mm-hmm. that you put that in the name. Yeah, well, it's quite, quite common in Greece, you know, people that go for dinner or, or, or to a tavern or whatever and spend a great amount of, uh, because they, they just eat, they drink and socialize. That's, that's part of the culture too, you know, as long as going to a bar. Well, bars start getting for the younger people, you know, uh, uh, but uh, for middle-aged people, they, they kind of like the idea of getting with their friends and maybe spend three, four hours and have dinner and drink two, three, three bottles of wine, you know, <laughs> right, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we kind of try to bring a little bit of that uh, as much as we can. So uh, so people, they, they, can, they can feel that part. I love that. Well, it's a great patio for it, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just gorgeous out here. <laughs> oh, my like, God. Especially in the morning, like, the, yeah. the sun is shining. But throughout the day, it's just like, then they have... They have these lights that come out at night. The, the fountain uh, turns lights on at I night. I mean, as far as, like, family feel, yeah. you, you feel it out here. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Especially, yeah. you know. Like, you could drink a few bottles of wine. And yeah. <laughs> laugh and hang with, <laughs> hang with family and friends. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. That's, well, life, it's all about it, you know. That's you have all a good it time. <laughs> you have some, some good time. We have stress for everything else. Oh, Let's yeah. enjoy it when we can, you know. Yeah. Yep. And... Uh, take the time I guess sometimes we can sometimes we, <laughs> yeah. uh, we do yeah. so, uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up is your so you're doing old school euros right uh-huh. uh, can you explain to us a little bit what that means as compared to like like I can go to an east coast joint and get kind of run of the mill euros but you're doing something a little bit different a little bit older school here with the pork right well I want to say that well it is both in Greece uh, well the, the traditional lamb and beef euros we've been using here for years you know it's it's more Americanized because for a little while in Greece they wasn't using uh, uh, ground uh, uh, meat put together they use more slabs of meat so we decided to to give a little bit of both of it so we do have uh, that uh, traditional Greek gyros also with a, a, a layers of meat, it's, so that's what it is. And so most of it is made pork belly. It can be done with anything. I guess you can do it with with uh, beef or with uh, lamb or whatever. But it's, traditionally, it's more like a pork uh, beef with a pork belly. And everything. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's kind of similar to like, have you ever seen pastor on a on a spit? I it's, have. it's similar it's a little bit uh a little bit drier and it's the pork belly specifically Mm. um and then you know you put that on the spit and it cooks it in layers and then you shave that off similar to like how you see euros cooking uh with the with the ground lamb and the beef uh it's the same process but it's it's like layers of pork belly on top of each other it's really really good i mean i've 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 had it, um, and I think the only other place that I've had it in Minnesota uh, was uh, the Naughty Greek, mm-hmm. and I can honestly say that th- your Euros was better, right? Well, I want to it say is. So that's an opinion. He's I not going to say it, but it is. <laughs> Thank you. No, we try, and we try to be good, as good as we can, and that's all it is. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that about oh, you. I want to try one. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have to try one for you. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It's Thanks. truly phenomenal. Um, so I guess one thing that I wanted to talk to you a little bit about is how, how, how has your food changed over the years? Have you gotten more towards you want to do as, as Greek as possible 
as traditional as possible, as old school as possible, or have you thrown new twists in, into the mix? Well, the only difference is starting from the beginning, while I was, you know, even in Minneapolis, we tried to do as, as much as we could and really try to do more things as as acceptable to, to our clientele and the good thing about it today people are willing to try more things yeah. so we can expand our menu and experience of food and before we had to do just whatever the people's basic stuff so yeah. people can know so of course we did change but not twist it around sometimes some things you might have uh, change a little bit but not really we would try to be as authentic as we can that's all it is it's our cooking uh, we, what we do cook here uh, you'll find the same things in Greece you'll find the same exactly things in northern part of Greece actually yeah yeah I, I've definitely experienced that you and know, I, I think that's actually super cool yeah, yeah. Um, you know keeping it keeping it from that um, yeah. in comparison to you know modernizing and going with you know the phones and just going crazy why not just keep it yeah so original the only fusing we might do using different try to you get more to a different ingredients maybe some that not be available in greece or we haven't here we tried but we don't do a lot of fusing anyhow yeah. right. we do a little bit just as possible well i actually that's one uh cool thing that i loved about here as opposed to working in other places in the city uh with other people with different connections it's like down to the cheese you're using authentic greek ingredients right like uh, mm. for a long time you're getting uh, stuff from bill's imports so you were using stuff like cassetti and keflotiri and you know uh, the the lamb that you were getting was the highest quality that you could find, um, yeah. uh, and it was always really impressive. So to mix that with the uh, attention to the authenticity of the food, I think is uh, unparalleled, really. And we were talking. We actually just talked to Chad uh -huh. yesterday. We had a little yeah. Zoom call with him. He oh, says hello, by the way. Oh, thank you. And uh, it's it, it's kind of a big deal when someone like that who is you know a foodie and been a chef for years and years and years and he's like i'm going to minneapolis i need you know i look at good food not you know hyped up trendy food and the first place i'm going to is it's greek to me that's a big yeah. deal yeah. It, yeah it causes pride for me because i'm greek but it also i think really talks and speaks to the establishment and the institution that you've created over the last 40 years I mean, it's. I totally agree with that. Uh, you, you can't just you, you can't be open for forty years mm -hmm. and and not have something that is truly truly beautiful and rooted in strong tradition, uh, but still adaptable and flexible. I think it's just awesome. That's the whole reason we came out here is to like, yeah. you know, well, we want to learn a little bit about about you and we want to tell people about you, but a lot of it is paying paying homage to a, like a Minneapolis staple. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah we'll, that, like I said in the past, you know, we try to be, we we'll work on it, we we'll bring in new ideas all the time, uh, and that's all it is. I mean, uh, whatever it's in Greece, you'll find it here, that's basically what we're trying to do. Actually, if it would be an ask in the past to open a restaurant in Greece too, you know, so it's not like... Oh, wow. Yeah, we would be it, yeah, in Athens, but we'll... Obviously, at the time, it wasn't that's something we were looking for. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like 2011. Hey, you guys want to come? Do you guys want to come to Athens? <laughs> no, no. Pour no, your no, money no. into Athens. No, right it was now. a few years ago. Well, a few years ago, somebody had a uh, 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 building a, a new building, and he said, I have the space. You want to come and start a new restaurant? So, you, you, some of the stuff we do. It might be a old school because it's kind of hard to, to get everything in Greece either. If you go in Taverna, if you go in Tarama, you're not going to find every restaurant to have Tarama Salata, Spesi Peta, uh, Eklund Dip. You're not going to find all of that, you know, and you'll find it here. You'll be surprised. Of course, we don't have the fresh fish they do get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we do have shrimp and we try to get as much as we can. Yeah. And we do the Branzinis, uh, which is a... Uh, 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 what we call it, Lavraki, the big whole fish, so that's, that's pretty much. 
and actually it comes from Greece too. Yeah. Oh really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, the Valbrake comes from Greece. Yeah. I, I I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. No. I uh, so with do you do you feel like and I kind of already know the answer to this question, so this is more for the people at home. But do you feel like when Yaya comes here, or if I was to take my Yaya or Papu or my old Greek family, they'd come here and they'd be like, this is Greek food? I think so. I yeah. think I, I hope so, just put it this way. <laughs> right, right. Because yeah. that's all we're trying. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Well, my, mom, my mom, when she was alive, I eat that food all the time, you know. And all our friends and relatives that come and they they enjoy the food, the spinach rice. I, I think that's a I think that's a big deal, and people don't realize how big of a deal that is because you know it, it's it's legit. I mean, you have people from the church come in here. You have people from all over the state will drive here because your authenticity is so on point, so on point. Right? Am I wrong? Do you have no, people coming we'll from all try, over we'll the state, do, right? and we or do dead, have anyway. a great support from the church, from St. Mary's, for years and years, I will say that. People are very nice, you know, no question about it. Uh, and uh, we try to do as best as we can. Both of the churches, St. Mary's and St. George, support us for many, many years, and that's very thankful, you know. They used to be Santa's coming here all the time and eat uh, Greek food. Yeah. So that makes us feel good. And all right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Elki. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sitting down with us. Thank you for yeah. giving us the time. Thank you for letting us use your beautiful patio. We've yeah. really enjoyed it. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk to Eric a little bit. Uh, thank. And then we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Yeah. To talk. Thank you, Elki. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Bye. Bye. Hey, Eric. How you doing, man? Doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> doing good. Things right. have been things have been pretty crazy lately, huh? Yeah. Yeah. To put it mildly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit about the timeline of you guys opening. Al- Alki talked about it a little bit, but I mean, it's been kind of a harrowing summer for you, huh? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, we. I mean, those guys started back in October, cleaning up the place, and then I came in in like November. Yeah. And then the plan originally was to kind of push ourselves. We were here every day cleaning and working on things and trying to get it where it needed to be. Yeah. Um, and the plan, of course, was to open in April. And that was, of course, when everything kind of hit the fan. Yeah. Right. And so uh, we had to kind of change gears. We kind of waited a little bit, kind of see, like, because in the beginning, like, nobody knew anything. anything. Yeah. It was just like, oh, right. what is this? Like, is it real? Is it not? Is it... But then it was like it got real. Yeah, it got and it real was like fast. Real fast. <laughs> and it was like, all right, we can't open. We can't. Yeah. So then we were thinking, okay, maybe we should open for takeout. But you know, with how big the place is, it's like, is it worth it? Is it? Yeah. Mm, is it smarter to just stay closed for till it? You know. But then we're sitting there like, you know, we've got bills to pay. We're 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 here. We're ready to go. So May fifth, we open for takeout, and. Mm. Uh, that first month was really we did really well like, yeah we did good numbers and the community reached out and it, uh, it was very touching that you know the community would come out and support us like that and, right and uh, and we did well but then of course right before we were allowed to open the patio I believe in early June that's when the, the riots hit yeah. so I, I had rest. these people that I interviewed for the second time, like, all right, we're gonna hire you this time. Yeah. Like, and I had to call him back. I'm like, ah, the, there's riots now. <laughs> and I was like, I, soon, yeah, soon. <laughs> so yeah. I have a question. When? How long was it closed? Uh, I didn't. I didn't get that. So part. the previous ownership that had it for about three years. Okay. They ran it from August 2016 until September 2019. Oh, okay. So it wasn't closed then, all that long. So from about eight, you know, end of September until we opened up in early May for takeout. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and saying that they ran it is, I think, an overstatement. You know, I I realize. I mean, you they, know, own, they 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 own the place, yeah. and they they did stuff here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They ran it into the ground. Well, that's good. You yeah. Know, uh, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. I 
I know you guys can't probably talk about it, but <laughs> as as a as a third party, I'm I'll gladly say that uh, I'm super happy that you guys have taken over the reins because you're doing amazing things. You've only been uh, you've only been open for patio service how how long now? Uh, I want to say it was uh, like June 4th or 5th, something like that. Yeah, so not long at all. I yep. mean, uh, a little bit more than a month. And uh, oh, yeah, I like mean, when when I come, the the food is phenomenal. It's just like it's so on point. Everything, everything looks great. Like, uh, have you done anything out on the patio, or the patio has pretty much stayed the same, right? More or less. I mean, we've done like painting, and we, you know, we threw some flowers some out here, yeah. and just because we've had like a limited amount of time and yeah. right, budget and yeah. preparedness, yeah. and so we're just kind of like playing catch up, but also kind of deciding like. You know, we have to kind of be more careful of what we're doing. We yeah. have to be like, all right, is this something we want to do or something we need right. to do? Yeah. Right. You know, is this going to benefit us? Yeah, That's what it all is about now, is yeah. wants and it's, needs. So you, you got to really kind of sit back and kind of think about it a little more than you would yep. under normal circumstances. Right. So, so as as fall kind of starts to, to loom around the corner and, and patio season starts to kind of, like, you start to get to the end what are some other things that you guys are doing because i know that you guys do catering i mean is it right is well that, is that that's like kind of what we're big piece starting to think about now because like right now we have the patio that's keeping us going right right now but obviously it's minnesota yeah and the weather can turn anytime you know especially even in end of september early october um even if it gets chilly some people may or may not come out but uh the big question is how, how people will feel like how comfortable are they coming to eat inside yeah and that's right that's a big factor and also catering is another thing where are people going to be doing you know similar celebrations for holidays similar gatherings mm -hmm. so that's a big question but we do catering and uh we thought about possibly trying to get into having some kind of like packaged meals that you can kind of take to go i think yeah. that's well, a good idea it's kind of like yeah take it home throw it in the oven yeah, like and a take it's ready and to go kind of situation. yeah just yeah. something kind of easy for people yeah so you don't necessarily have to have the restaurant experience sit down and do all that but you still got to eat yep and you want some unique food that's really you know homemade and yeah uh and that's the kind of stuff you got to do i mean you got to think about that stuff now yeah because it's you don't know what's going to happen right i mean <laughs> yeah. we're kind of it's scary, man. <laughs> well it's it's like a recurring theme on our show of kind of like not just restaurants but how everybody like hey so what's your what's your six month plan you know like what and, and we've actually learned yeah. like we've some, learned quite a bit we've learned some interesting like ideas and and unique takes on how to deal with the situation yeah and uh you know i think that package that package kind of ready to go throw it in the oven uh is a good is a good thing and i think that the catering is a big piece too because um greek food is just set up in a way i mean we were talking with alki a little bit about you know the parea right and mm -hmm. how like it's kind of a group experience sure. but the, the the food is actually like created in that way like it's yep. created to eat with a big family like when you make pastizio like you get a single serving of pastizio here but it's a whole you make a whole hotel pan of it right, right. as a you know very very lasagna style you know with pastito and musaka but also like a whole fish like a lot of people can't eat a whole fish so it's like there are there are aspects of the greek the greek cuisine that i think will translate well to the new covid environment yeah so there's hope there's always hope yeah it's just you gotta look outside the box sometimes yeah you know and it's like oh my god we're not used to this but shit that's where it's going yeah like give it the times i guess yeah you know yeah so you've worked here how long uh so i worked here for about 11 years total and then and then now for almost i don't know how many months now so right so you've so you have a lot of history with the place oh yeah yeah you have a lot of history with the place and uh i the reason i kind of wanted to set it up with alki and then you is because like your mm, it's a it's a little bit of changing of the guard right, right. like you know alki's getting up there in years and it's like he's he's still cracking it out he's an amazing oh, yeah. i mean like a superhuman oh, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> but it's getting to Absolutely. the point where it's just like, you know, new people are coming in and I want to showcase the fact that, you know, the people who are coming in to support the restaurant, to run the restaurant, are capable. And you're super capable, man. I super appreciate capable. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's about our time, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks hey, thank for you, doing man. this. This, yeah. Is, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. Thanks, oh, yeah. man.